Good morning. I'm Pastor Brian Froggett, and together with Pastor Ann Fenlison and the entire staff of Trinity Lutheran Church of Long Lake, Minnesota, we welcome you to worship at Trinity. And happy Father's Day to all you dads and grandpas and great-grandpas and those who have been father figures to others. We pray that you are blessed on this day. And, and also, uh, this is a tough day for a lot of people. We've got you in our prayers as well. Assisting with worship today is our Director of Worship and Music, Mark Hemingway. Uh, special musicians today are Jim Benson, Hope Carey, and Jane Hemingway. Our Just for Kids time is Stacy Thoma, who is our Director of, of Early Childhood Ministries here. Uh, on the camera today is Carrie Bullimer. Sound is Charlie Allen, and our post-production person is Kelsey Ahrens, our office manager. We are celebrating Holy Communion this day, and so I invite you to gather all the elements of Holy Communion, the, the wine, the bread, uh, or juice, and uh, that will be announced prior to communion as well. But let us now sing an old favorite of the church, and that is, This is My Father's World. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess, we confess that, that we do not, not trust your, your abundance, abundance, and we, and deny, we deny your, your presence, presence in our, our lives. lives. We, place we place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. efforts. We fail, we fail to, to believe that you provide, provide enough for all. We abuse, we abuse your, your good creation for our own benefit. We fear, we fear difference, difference and do not welcome others as you, you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. deed. By, By your, your grace, grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With you. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, 
to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll now hear a quartet today sung by Jim Benson, Hope Carey, and Jane and Mark Hemingway. The music is called Changed. How I was dead and then I came to life No more living in the dark of night Now everything's alright I've been changed I've been saved Brand new day I've been changed I've been changed Future's bright and there ain't no doubt I've been changed, I've been changed Gather the kids around. It's just for kids time with Stacy Thoma. Hi, everybody. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to take your hands and I want you to run them through your hair. And I want you to think about, you know, the numbers of hairs that you have on your head. I don't even want to try to count because that would take forever to sit and try to count all the hairs on my head. Um, next thing I want you to do is I want you to look outside your window and I want you to think about how many birds are out there and how many sparrows are flying around. That's another thing that would be really hard to do because for one thing, uh, they're moving around and it would be really hard to count them all. But, and the second thing is that there's a lot of them out there. Um, well, there is somebody, of course, that knows the exact answer to both of those, uh, the hares and the birds, and that, of course, is God. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 10, verse 30, that even the hairs of your head are all counted. Now I want you to 
look at your hands you know look at the different lines on your on your hands or you know the fingerprints that you have or maybe your look at your eyes we all have different eyes we might have brown eyes we might have blue eyes we might have green eyes and you know what some of you even have some freckles well nobody knows you better than god does because he created you and he created you exactly the way that you are supposed to be and he made you in a special special way and jesus says in matthew chapter 10 verse 31 that each of you has more value than the many sparrows. So what that means is that you are important to God. He created you and he loves you so much that he knows exactly the number of hairs on your head. The Holy Gospel this day, according to the evangelist Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 24th verse. In this reading, Jesus warns his disciples that their ministry in his name will meet with opposition. However, he assures them that they need not fear, for the truth will come to light. Life is found in Christ. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will be not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your own head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is, is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from Jeremiah chapter 23, the 29th verse. Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 25 years ago, when my wife Kim and I were in Northern Ireland, I think I heard one of the saddest um, stories of a divided family that I've ever encountered. The division had to do with a conflict that was known by every Irish person called the Troubles. For those of you who don't know what the Troubles was, that was the war that lasted almost 40 years from the late 1960s to the 1990s over in Ireland and Northern Ireland and really all of Great Britain. It was seen as a war between Roman Catholics and Protestant Christians. A civil war, really, in which about 3,500 men, women, and children 
were killed. Some say it was a political war. Some say it was a religious war. Others said it was a complex historical war. And I think scholars believe now that it was all of the above. But Sean, this young man that we, my wife and I, met on a cold and wet November in Belfast, the capital of Northern Ireland, didn't talk about any of that. He simply told us his story. It's interesting what you learn when you really listen to other people's stories. Sean was a Protestant, you see, and was taught how to hate Roman Catholics. Now, of course, this wasn't his parents' intention for him to hate, but he was taught very clearly that he was have nothing to do with Catholics. His father, whom he called Da, which is short for dad, was a strong loyalist to the Queen of England. Sean loved his father, admired him, respected him. And he had passion, his Da, but it was a selective kind of passion. It was a passion for the British way of life, for the Queen of England, passion for Protestant Christianity, and of course a pattern for his own family and friends. But Sean was also taught by his parents to love God. And you know what? Sean took that very, very seriously. He took his faith in God so seriously. This faith about this God who loves, creates all. This God who wants to unite and bring people together. Sean believed in that God even at 19 years of age. And listen, in the midst of growing up in such a um, horrible time with the bombs going off, you know, in restaurants and hotels, Sean finds solace in the person of Jesus Christ. Well, little did Sean's parents know just how powerful that act of teaching their son would be. Little did they, did they, did they suspect how that passion that Jesus gave their son would seemingly endanger their very family. Let me explain. You see, when Sean turned 19 years of age, he started showing up at his parents' house with a new friend uh, that he had met at the technical school he was attending, somebody his parents had never met before. Sean's friend's name was Kieran, a really nice kid who lived on the other side of the city of Belfast. Sean's parents really liked this new friend of Sean's. They liked this new friend of Sean so much that they themselves invited him over, Kieran, for supper one night. And just before supper, that night, Sean's da, his father, said grace, as he did before every meal, asking God to bless their food, to bless their family and friends, to bless their cause, which is interesting, and to bless their lives with peace. But it's then that the whole night unraveled. After the table prayer was spoken, Sean's new friend, Kieran, made the sign of the cross after Sean's dad said, Amen. And it was that sign of the cross that betrayed Kieran as being a Roman Catholic because that was their practice. Sean's da exploded with the intensity and the heat and hatred of a real live bomb. So intense was the explosion of anger that Sean's friend Kieran was quickly ushered out of the room by Sean's mother into the kitchen, leaving Sean to face his father's wrath all alone. And the words he spoke to his father fell hard like a hammer shattering rock. You get him out of here, his father said. But da, Sean cried back, he's my friend. You should not be having a friend like that, Sean's da said, pointing to the kitchen where Kieran was. But da, you know what Jesus says. You know what the Bible says. We're all one in Christ. 
All of us. Kieran's a Christian. I am a Christian. We're a Christian. And his father, with clenched jaw, started pounding his fist on the table as if he were, and Sean's were driving a nail into wood. And he said to Sean, Get out and take that one with you, pointing to Kieran in the kitchen. And so Sean, dead now in his father's eyes, left with his friend. Like a hammer smashing in pieces the strong tie between a father and a son. And ironically, Jesus' words of unity, of reconciliation, seemingly tearing them apart. When we met Sean on that cold and wet November day in Belfast, he had neither seen his mother or his father, his dad, since that night two years before. Dear friends, if you ask me, the Jesus that we meet today in the gospel is really hard to listen to and hard to understand. Any day, let alone Father's Day. I mean, this doesn't look anything like the Jesus that we see in children's story Bibles. No, the Jesus of today's gospel is stern and seems dead serious. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth, Jesus asks. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Sometimes Jesus' words fall like a sword or like a hammer, breaking our comfort zone and our ideas on what Jesus is, who he is, who our fellow human being is. I kind of think we fool ourselves if we believe that following Jesus will only bring the easy life and a comfortable peace of mind. At times, Jesus' words make us feel uncomfortable. They sometimes call us to be uncomfortable with our moral compromises, to sometimes be torn apart by the sad condition of our world, our country, our cities, and even our own lives. At times, and you've probably heard something like this before, Jesus comes to disturb those who are comfortable, just as he comforts those who are disturbed. In these very tough words in the Gospel of Matthew today, Jesus is talking to his followers about commitment and loyalty to him and to his word. But commitment and loyalty to him can sometimes clash with the things or the ideas or, God forbid, even the people we hold closest and dearest to our hearts. Yes, at times, even our family. I began the sermon today with a reading from the prophet Jeremiah, a verse that says that God's word is like a, a hammer, sometimes breaking our rock-like wills and our pride, and sometimes chipping away our hearts away from the unhealthy attachments that we can keep us separated from, from God and from God's word and God's will for our lives. Commitment and loyalty to Christ may mean having to stand up to a loved one instead of for of a loved one sometimes. It may, it may mean having to be tough with our love for a family member or friend because of what Christ says to us first. Sometimes, for example, following Jesus means having to say to your friend, man, you're drinking too much. You need help. Because commitment to Christ means believing the truth that God sends angels into our lives in the form of Alcoholics Anonymous or treatment centers that can help your friend heal. Sometimes following Jesus means that we have to say to our, grandma, our grandfather, Grandpa, it bothers me when you talk about black people that way. Because commitment to Christ means believing the truth that God loves all of his creation. All of us. 
And sometimes, sometimes following Jesus means having to hear some of those very same tough words spoken to you by someone else. Because commitment to Christ means believing the truth that we all fall short of the glory of God. We all sin. But listen, Jesus would also have us believe that being committed and loyal to him and his word is the way to real peace. God's peace. The kind of peace that isn't just a temporary absence of turmoil or trouble or worry, but a lasting abundance of courage, wisdom, strength, confidence, and hope. Even in the midst of the most troubling situations in our lives. For just as a hammer can break down and pull apart, so can a hammer build up and make new. Yes, sometimes Jesus needs to break hearts with the hammer of his word, but he does it so he can build brand new hearts, hearts that know forgiveness and reconciliation and healing, hearts that know justice, hearts that know compassion and empathy, because of the cross, we can know that God will not leave us in ruins, folks. But he builds new lives. He raises up to new life. And this is the best news of all. He's the one that does it for you and for me. It's not a, not a matter of us having to buck up and try to be more committed or loyal to him. It's simply trusting that he is committed to us, to you and me. It's trusting that in hearing his word and sharing his supper that we will do in just a little bit, he gives you all that you need to face the challenges of your life with the deepest kind of peace that you will ever know. Where it all went wrong on that night when Sean's dad sent him and his friend packing, leaving. When, where it all went wrong, according to Sean, was that his dad was unwilling to listen to the story that Kieran had, to listen to his own story, for them to listen to his story, for them to talk together. A couple months after our trip to Ireland, when we returned back to the US, um, we received a letter from Sean, that young man that we met on that cold and wet November day in Belfast, Northern Ireland. He still hadn't spoken with his mother or his dad since that fateful night some two years before. But he mentioned in his letter that he received a, a piece of paper in the mail upon which was scribbled this familiar Bible verse from Galatians. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. It wasn't signed, this piece of paper, he wrote, and the handwriting was not familiar. Yet it was from the very part of Belfast where Sean had grown up, where his mother and dad still lived. And just knowing that, he wrote, left Sean with the deepest kind of hope and the deepest kind of peace. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, who makes us one. Amen. Let us sing now the hymn, O Praise the Gracious Power.
Let us now confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole of creation, let us pray for our shared world. Reconciling God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Bring health and healing to all who are affected by the pandemic. Sustain health care workers and first responders. Comfort those who mourn the death of loved ones, including the family and friends of Mike Brickley and Maida Schoberg. And ease the pain of those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, including Jeff, those in our ongoing prayers, and those we lift up to you now, either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. Compassionate God, you are with us, and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers, and all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have uh, yet to go and find the elements for communion, we encourage you to do that now. Bread and wine, juice, crackers. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come. your Your will will be be done. done on earth earth as in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive forgive us our sins as we forgive forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. Amen. So last Sunday, a week ago, was our first drive-in worship here at Trinity. It was a smash. 
Our next drive-in worship will be next week on June 28th. It'll be at 10 o'clock. And if you weren't, even if you were at the last one, if you weren't at the last one, we want you all to be there. It'll be wonderful to see you in our parking lot next week at 10. Also, Trinity member Mike Brickley died this past week. His funeral is uh, set to be held Tuesday at a service for the family only at David Lee Funeral Home. But visitation will happen at David Lee after the family service. They have, the family have set aside a, a separate time for those of you who are seniors or are vulnerable. And so the time for visitation for you folks will be from between 3 and 4 p.m. on Tuesday. For all others, visitation will take place between 4 and 8. That's this coming Tuesday at David Lee Funeral Home. I want to thank you for joining us for worship this morning. If you are looking for more information about Trinity Lutheran Church in Long Lake, Minnesota, please check our website out uh, at trinitylonglake.org and click on the Trinity Connect page. They'll, once you do that, you will find a, just a wonderful resource for all things uh, that are happening here uh, at Trinity and outside our walls as well. And if you haven't already, please do follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Trinity, Trinity Long Lake is what you want to look for. And we continue to give thanks for your financial gifts to Trinity. To find out how you may give to Trinity, you can follow the link at the bottom of the screen. And we are so very grateful for your continued support of Trinity's mission and ministries. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. God's peace be with you. After worship ends, we encourage you to share the peace of Christ with people outside of your household. Receive now the blessing. God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Worship concludes now with the hymn, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus.